Hello, this is Gary Fox, and uh, I'm creating a new video today. This one is, a, again, about converting from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. And uh, the reason we went down this path is that we're having to determine this angle right here and the length of what I called has the bird flies path or the BF is what I called it on my naming convention over here to the side. And so uh, we're going to have to determine this angle, which is, is called the azimuth. Okay, the normal way that people are thinking about this is that we're at this location, let's say, and there is another location here, and we're going to lob a cannonball over to that location. Unfortunately, that's the way that it's normally been thought of. Uh, since I'm a little sick of cannonballs and rockets and things being lobbed back and forth at each other, let's think of a more peaceful reason for this. And what I'm going to talk about right here is the weather map. They're solving the problem continuously where they're uh, looking at an angle and a reflection. We'll go to this one right here. It's an Atlanta. And uh, they're looking at an angle and a reflection of a cloud. And they're wanting to know that location of where that cloud is on the map. So they're solving the problem backwards. But it's the same problem where they're converting from an angle measurement to a Cartesian coordinate measurement. And... Uh, much rather be thinking about how the weather works and that than I would be thinking about how we go about killing each other. So you see that the center point of this thing, which would be the center point of our Cartesian coordinate, the temporary one, is right there at where that little plus is, which is where the, the uh, radar tower location is. And then they're able to determine where all these clouds are and they can animate it. So they're doing thousands of calculations per second to calculate all this. And what they had to do was they're doing what we're doing by hand, but then they automated it so that a computer program is calculating it all the time. Okay, so that's an example of why this is useful. Uh, we will be coming up with a example for us on how we're going to use it to build some stuff uh, very quickly. But we had to go through all of this math. And unfortunately, there's going to be one more that we're going to have to go through after this one. Uh, because there's two ways of defining angles. And unfortunately, some of the programs use the second way, which is not what we're normally, normally used to. And you'll see a little bit of that today when I talk about talk us through this. Okay, we're going to go to basic right triangle again. And I've got the wrong stuff turned on. Let's go to the first right triangle. And let's zoom in on it. Okay, we have a right triangle and we know what the angles are in this case. So we need some math to know what the uh, dimensions are of these two lines. After we learn to do it this way, the forward way, I guess, we'll learn how to do it the backwards way, where we know the angles, or we know the sides, and we don't know the, uh, the angles. Now, I chose this with the hypotenuse equal to 1, and you'll see why in a minute. It makes the math a little bit easier. So, we're going to go to add some text to this, and go back up. Okay, we're going to define some math functions. These are trigonometry. Okay, the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So we'll use this 30 degree side and we have this side over here that's the opposite side of it is called the opposite. The side next to it is called the adjacent. And that's called the cosine if you take the adjacent side and divide it by the hypotenuse, you end up with what's called the cosine. 
And I do want to point out that in the links below this uh, video, I will have a link to my website. And in that website, there are actually two uh, things that you can download. One is a spreadsheet that will calculate all these calculations for you. And that web sheet or that spreadsheet is written in Excel. However, I use a uh, free version called LibreOffice that will uh, do that for you, and you can you can use it free download. And uh, I am, of course, a big fan of open software, so I will also give you a link how to uh, get to LibreCAD, I'm sorry, Libra Office to uh, get yourself a free spreadsheet software, actually free everything in Office software, and uh, it will allow you to be able to use that spreadsheet. Okay, so if the opposite over hypotenuse is a sine of an angle, if we use hypotenuse times the sine, we get what the opposite side is. Since our hypotenuse in this case is 1, we don't have any multiplication to do. We just simply get the uh, sine of the angle. And that will give us the opposite side. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll use the calculator that's built in this thing. And uh, we have the angle is 30 degrees. And we're going to take the sign of that, and this calculator you have to get in front of it. And we type the sign, and we end up with that that is 0 0.5 inches. In other words, it's half the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, the adjacent, if we use the cosine, is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And that is the cosine of the angle. If you take the hypotenuse, again, 1 in this case, and you take the cosine of the angle, you get what the adjacent one is. So we will take 30 degrees again. This time we'll take the cosine, get in front of it. And the cosine of 30 says that this is 0 0.866. So for grins, we will turn on the dimensions that I've taken for this, and it came out exactly the same. I actually just took dimension using LibreCAD here to come up with the number. So it works. Okay, there's two other formulas. If you don't know what the hypotenuse is, you can use the tangent of the angle times the adjacent side, and that will give you the opposite. Uh, that will give you the opposite side. And then there's a thing called the cotangent, which is adjacent divided by opposite. And you take the opposite times the cotangent, and that will give you the adjacent side. However, we've already learned how to calculate the hypotenuse length if we knew the other two sides. And very often, if one of these numbers is very, very small, uh, you can end up with a math error because you have a, uh, anytime you divide something by something very small, you end up with a, uh, you're multiplying your error. So division by a very small number, 30 and 60 degree angles are not a problem. But if we were at a 0.1 degree, we would be having a real big problem if we were using this side right here and calculating, calculating our uh, angle. Because we'd be dividing by a 0.01 or 0 0.0001, and our, we might be inaccurate in our measurement. So usually you're better off to use the hypotenuse and the sine and the cosine. Okay, we've now calculated, knowing the uh, angles, what the sides are. Well, usually our problem is we know the sides, we want to calculate the angles. So we will do a little different deal here. And I will use my second triangle. And we'll go ahead and add the text to it. We'll zoom in on that. Okay, now, the angle, if we're interested in this angle right here, is the arc sine, which is the opposite 
of sine. It's the inverse function of sine. If you take a op, remember sine was opposite over hypotenuse. If we then calculate that ratio and then calculate the uh, arc sine, we will end up with the angle. Same thing if we know the adjacent and the hypotenuse, and then we then take the arc cosine, then we can also calculate the angle. And I got this one screwed up. It should be, uh, let me edit it. <laughs> well, anyhow, this should be arc, co arc tangent of the opposite over adjacent. So I have a error right here. Bother me. I don't like having errors. So that's the uh, arc tangent. So angle equals the arc tangent of the opposite over the adjacent, and the angle is also equal to the arc cotangent over the adjacent divided by the opposite. Arc just means basically the inverse function. And so we will calculate that. We'll calculate a couple of them. So again, we'll go to our calculator. And this calculator works a little different. So let's do uh, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, since the hypotenuse is 1. And this is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we will take the cosine. We're taking the inverse function, and the way this does that is by doing that. And we calculate equals, and we got 30 degrees, which is exactly what we should have. I believe on the uh, calculator that comes with Windows, it actually has a cos, a sine, a tan. Uh, this one does things a little different. Okay, let's do uh, 0.5. 0.5 divided by 1 is still 0.5. We're going to take the sine, but we're going to take the arc sine of that. And again, we come up with 30 degrees. And we could do the same thing for the, uh, for the 60 degrees. As a matter of fact, let's do the opposite. 0.866 divided by 0.5. So we're taking the opposite and the adjacent of this angle right here. And you know, you do a point instead of a question mark. Okay, and now we do the uh, tangent. But we're going to do the arc tangent, so we do the inverse function. And we end up with 59.999, which is really, really close. To 60, but you can see how that the uh, tangent and the cotangent are not necessarily arc. The uh, tangent and cotangent, or actually arc tangent and arc cotangent, are not quite as accurate as doing it with the uh, other. And that's because we have 0.86666, it's really 0.866667. It's one of those numbers that uh, keeps right on going forever. Matter of fact, let's just try that. 0.8667 divide by 0.5. We take the tangent, arc tangent. And now we got 60, but we got a little bit over. So you can see how that those inaccuracies add up. There's not a lot you can do about that. And if the, this angle was a whole lot smaller, those inaccuracies would show up a lot more. So you're better off to take to use uh, Pythagorean's theorem, calculate what the uh, hypotenuse is, and then use one of these first two functions right here. Okay. We've now calculated what that azimuth is. So let's go ahead now and uh, let's shrink that. And let's do the last part that I need to tell you about on this. We'll turn that off. We'll scan, go back to where we're now using this. 
Okay, if we calculated this, this angle right here, so we're going from here to here, and we calculate that as that angle, if we're in the, heading in the direction of the first quadrant, then basically that angle that we calculate is the azimuth angle. And by the way, right now we're calculating everything with positive numbers because we're calculating length. We're not calculating the direction like we have been in our, uh, using negative numbers like we have been in our uh, Cartesian coordinates. We're going to deal with that in just a few minutes. But, uh, or in the next episode, but for right now, just all of all the numbers are positive, so we're calculating this direction, and then we're just going to uh, deal with it by doing these little rules that I'm saying right here. Okay, if we're in a, if we're in the uh, second quadrant direction, so we're heading upward and westward instead of upward and eastward like we were when we're going in the first quadrant direction. We would take this number that we calculated by just using positive numbers here and then we'd add 90 degrees to it and that would give us our azimuth angle. That's where we'd have to aim the gun or that's where the radar is pointing when it's getting a reflection. Okay, if we're doing it and we're going into the third quadrant direction, in other words, we're going east and south or negative and negative, but we're using just the positive numbers again, we will calculate it what we will calculate for this angle is that angle plus 180 degrees is giving us our actual azimuth angle. And then finally, if we're going in quadrant four direction, so we're going south and east, then we would, our angle, so this number here would be positive and this number would be negative. But we're, again, using our calculations based on just positive numbers. We would take the calculated angle plus 270 degrees is giving us our actual azimuth angle. And that is normally the way that I do it, although we're going to talk about in the very next episode, because I have to talk about two things there. Uh, one is how spreadsheet software calculates the angle, what it's using. It doesn't use degrees. And the second thing I have to talk about is using the negative numbers in the actual calculation. So we will talk about that in the future. Uh, I'm sorry, there's probably a little bit of an ab abrupt skip right now in this video. Uh, I realized after I recorded it that I uh, had forgot probably the most important part. <laughs> so we're going back and adding that in the middle. So anyhow, we now know all the quadrants and what we're going to have to add to it. So we're going to go and calculate the real problem that we came here with. Okay, we have uh, we have this angle here, or this arrow, this vector, and we're wanting to determine both the angle, or the length, and the azimuth of it. So we are going to calculate that right now. Okay, it's 2 by 4. So we will first calculate the length so that I know what the hypotenuse is, and I will follow my own recommendation there. So it's 2 times 2 plus 4 times 4, 4, and that's going to equal 20. And now we're going to get to the front of that and do the square root of it. We hit equals, and we got 4.47. That is our hypotenuse. Okay, and now we are going to take the opposite. The hypotenuse times, no, we're going to take the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we're going to take uh, the opposite is 4, divide by. That gives us that number right there. And now we're going to take the arc sine of that. So we take sine, and we do the inverse so that we got arc sine, and we hit equals. We now know that angle is 63.4349 degrees. So we have both a distance of 
4.472 at an angle of 63.43 degrees. Okay, now let's do the, uh, the second path. The one going from point 0.1 to point 0.2. And that one is uh, going to require us to uh, use those last rules that we just did. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to calculate the, uh, the length. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 and 4. So we got 9 times 9. 9 times 9 plus 4 times 4 equals 97. We take the square root of that using Pythagorean's theorem. And we got 9.84888. actually. Okay. We're going to Take that, we're going to divide it into the opposite angle right here. We're going to calculate opposite side. We're going to calculate this angle right here. Again, we're using not negative numbers, although both of those would have been negative. And we're going into the uh, third quadrant direction. So we take 4 divided by that number. That gives us... 0 0.4. Now we're going to take the arc cosine or arc sine. So we take sine, we take the inverse function, and we end up with 23.96 degrees. Okay, now remember we have to add, let's go back to that previous page there. Because we're going in quadrant four direct or three direction, we have to add 180 degrees to it. So we add 180 degrees to that. Sorry about that. And we got 203.96 degrees. So now we have both an azimuth and a, uh, and a distance. So that's, we would say aim at 23.96, I'm sorry, 203.96 degrees. And the range of it is 9.84 eight, nine blocks, whatever these blocks are. So we have both an azimuth and a, a length. And that's what we were trying to start with. Okay, um, we'll resume back to previous programming. Meanwhile, this is enough to get us done for, for this and, and where I want to move when I talk about how to calculate buoyancy which is where I'm really going with all this. But the main thing that I also want to point out is that I have all of this available in a PDF if you want to download it. And I also have that spreadsheet that saves you from having to remember all of these formulas that we taught here earlier. The formulas in, uh, whoops, let's see, I picked the wrong thing. Yeah, let's just turn them all on. The formulas I talked to you about here. And it doesn't seem to want to scan down. The formulas I talked about in this area. And the formulas I talked about right here. I have all of those available for you in a uh, PDF. And then it also calculates them in the spreadsheet that I am going to provide the link for once you go to my website. Anyhow, I hope this is helpful. It's a very quick introduction to uh, trigonometry. But trigonometry is not as scary as most people try to tend to make it. Uh, and it's very, very, very useful. Probably the most useful 
kind of math that you can ever come up with if you're doing a construction or analyzing things. Uh, anyhow, appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of this, and hopefully I did it in a clear method. I also will have some links of some other people teaching this in my uh, in my video notes. I think I'll put them on my website notes. Uh, so you've got many, many ways to learn this, but believe me, it's very useful. Um, Probably the next video I'm going to do is going to be the one on buoyancy uh, to give you some real true-to-life methods of where this is useful. And then I will go back to a pure math one where I talk about the unit circle. And that's where I have to talk about something called radians as a measurement. So we got a lot ahead of us. But hopefully, again, you get something out of this. Appreciate you listening. This is Gary Fox of Great Make.